know what a man's lie is like? A man's lie is like, I'm at, I was at Tony's house. I'm at Kenny's house. That's a man's lie. A woman's lie is like, it's your baby. Mr. Paris's wife cheated on him, so he was always checking to see if his kids looked like him. He was the first man in bed star to get a DNA test. The practice of passing off a pregnancy as somebody else's has been with us since the beginning of time. What the DNA testing is doing for us is bringing us to a point where we can have factual evidence for that. Women have always been promiscuous and unfaithful. That's why chastity belts are invented. It's also why scientists believe the penis is shaped in the way it is, to remove other men's sperm from women's vaginas before depositing their own. Yet it's typically the man who's painted as a philanderer. Men cheat for the same reason that dogs lick their balls, because they can. It's part of their biology. Women cheat. Yeah, but it's completely different. How? Because we don't go around randomly attacking any man that we're attracted to. Speak for yourself. We're not driven by testosterone. When women are unfaithful, it tends to be without the use of protection, which makes the whole thing even worse for the man. And Susan admits she's not sure her husband Nick is the father of her baby. Now, if not, the father could be the man she met on the way to the chip shop after a rare night out on the town. However, the prevalence of paternity fraud is much greater than most people realise. Approximately between 10 and 12 percent uh, we prove that the man who we test is not the father of the child. On average, um, one in ten children are not uh, fathered by the man that appears on their birth certificate. But that, um, that figure fluctuates depending on which socioeconomic group you're in. So it goes, it, it goes down to about 1% um, of children in higher socioeconomic groups, and it can go up to about as high as 30% of children in uh, lower socioeconomic groups. In the US, about 10 million kids are being raised by men that think they're the fathers, but are not. And in Britain, the figures believed to be around 1 million children. That means one in 20 children, or one in every class at school, is not fathered by the man who thinks he's the dad. Look, if I was a man, and my wife has been on a trip to New York, and she comes back, and six months later she's pregnant, I'm going to DNA test. There is a presumption in law that husbands are the fathers of children. That's the great presumption of British law. But I think when there was, when there was ever there's been any kind of anonymous research, statistically, it, it, it's, an, it's incredibly striking. It's quite striking how many husbands are not the, the biological fathers of their children. And if you had a law where every mother was forced to tell, you might open, it could be a big can of worms, that. Robin Baker, a biological psychologist, has studied paternity fraud and its effects. He found that it was a common occurrence and was demonstrably poisonous to family structure and the health and upbringing of children. This is a great opportunity for us, Peter. What about Reese, huh? You ever think about that? I mean, you want to take him away from his father? You may not even be his father. What? He might not be yours. There was somebody else. It was just casual. And then there was you. It has to be the ultimate betrayal a woman can commit against a man, which is then compounded by years of her lying which can only be described as deeply evil. But I don't know what's worse. That she's always known or she's just doing this to get Reese. Well, I've got a paternity test. I, uh, I haven't taken it yet. How long does it take? I don't know. I don't know that I'm going to do it. You have to. What if I'm not his father, huh? It goes back to thinking about why families break down and or more generally, why would, it, why would individuals be unsatisfied with their partners? Often a man may suspect that a child is not his, but not be certain of it. A few years later, we were having our first child from my own personal seat. There he was, Earl Jr. And where a father is doubtful of his paternity, consciously or subconsciously, all sorts of relationship problems are bound to occur. It leads almost inevitably to family breakdown and fatherlessness. One man, his child had red hair, and he had dark hair, and he didn't even like to be seen out with it. And of course, if the father walks out, we don't know the reason. He's just another example of male irresponsibility, another deadbeat dad. Parental care is a very um, costly and valuable resource. We don't expect people to spread it about um, willy-nilly. We expect them to direct their parental care to, um, to their genetic children. Undoubtedly, because paternity fraud committed by women is so common, it's not legal in this country to get a paternity test without the permission of the mother or a court order. As well as having the consent of the mother, 
We also need the child's consent if the child is considered to be Gillick competent. Or we use whether a child is at secondary age as a, some sort of guide as to whether they're competent. So, and it's got to be informed consent, so they must know why they're doing it. Uh, and they must know about the confidentiality of the process. Um, there are times when we're approached by the putative father to test a child without the mother's consent, or they may say the mother doesn't want to give consent, in which case we, we won't do it without the mother's consent. A man can only find out if his wife cheated on him and had another man's child with her permission. The government heeds advice that this is in the best interests of the child. Why do you require consent from all three parties? Why? Yeah. What are the issues involved in making sure that everyone agrees? It's a terribly important process. It's, I don't know, it seems to um, go deep to the heart. Uh, and it's very important that people are happy with that. But clearly, in the vast majority of cases, paternity tests strengthen the family and improve outcomes for children because they can deliver good news by removing lingering doubts. The truth, on the whole, however painful and uncomfortable it is, works better for the human psyche. Deception erodes our confidence in our own judgment and our relationships with other people, and that always has destructive consequences, larger or smaller degrees. No man ever knows for sure on leaving hospital with his wife and new child that the baby is his. If women were forced to endure this lack of certainty, they will complain loudly about this terrible abuse of their rights. With such high rates of paternity fraud, DNA testing should be mandatory on the birth of a child, so that men can have the same certainty of parenthood that women enjoy. A man should know. I think it comes down to a man should know. Uh, it's not necessarily about punishing the, the woman. It's about, kind of, it's about the knowledge. It's about giving the man full knowledge. And I guess the only way to do that is to have a paternity test at every pregnancy. But the government will never make paternity testing routine. It's not interested if the wrong man is enslaved by a woman, and they don't care about the broken family that almost inevitably results. They just want some man, any man, to pay for the upbringing of that child. She's not my daughter. Well, she's somebody's daughter, isn't she? And whoever it is, it's my job to find him and to make him a supporter. That's the law. Government doesn't even attempt to educate women about their behaviour, nor do they even address it as a massive problem it is. We see domestic violence documentaries vilifying men every other weekend, but no programmes vilifying women for their despicable behaviour. I regard paternity fraud as a far more destructive problem in society than domestic violence. But whereas domestic violence is perpetrated by both sexes, and is mostly instigated by women. Paternity fraud is an abuse exclusively committed by women, and it's one of the most evil crimes that exist. Domestic violence can occur as an understandable loss of control by a man or a woman. But paternity fraud is different. It has calculated abuse of a man for years on end. She lies and cheats him emotionally and financially. She's completely selfish, with no concern for the man or the child. But have you ever seen a news item about the men and children suffering due to paternity fraud? Ever seen a London Underground poster chastising women about it? Ever heard a government minister or police officer tell us about the steps they're taking to tackle paternity fraud? Where is our paternity fraud bill to go with the domestic violence bill? Society much prefers to concentrate on crimes where men can be singled out, even when those same crimes are committed by women.